Time to take a look at the future fourth aircraft carrier of the Chinese Navy, known simply as the Carrier 004. Much like the Carrier Type 003, the Carrier 004 is expected to have integrated electrical propulsion and electromagnetic catapults for launching aircraft, but it should also be a general improvement over the Type 003. A key question is whether the fourth aircraft carrier will be nuclear powered or conventionally powered. Contrary to popular belief, the answer has not been settled. This video looks at the arguments presented by both sides of the debate. Let's start by looking at the evidence and arguments in support of a nuclear powered fourth carrier. First, we have credible rumors from supposed Chinese insiders. The PLA Navy and the military in general is highly secretive and silent about the development of its warships and technology, at least in the early stages. So the initial source of information is often rumors from certain individuals with a credible history of predicting outcomes. In the case of the fourth aircraft carrier, we have an online commentator known simply as Pop3. He is a retired PLA Navy colonel who now works in the research and development of naval technology. And I wouldn't be surprised if he has unofficial permission to reveal classified information selectively. According to him, the fourth aircraft carrier will be nuclear powered. That said, he has been wrong about certain things in the past, but his words do carry some weight in the PLA watching community. There is also other circumstantial evidence. As you probably know, the Jianan shipyard in Shanghai is where the Type 003 aircraft carrier is being built. In 2016, the Jianan shipyard was recruiting for engineers specializing in nuclear propulsion, and the recruiting adverts specifically mentioned the military part of the shipyard. The Jianan shipyard does not build nuclear submarines, so the hiring of nuclear engineers can only be for the propulsion of surface warships. Secondly, I must emphasize that nuclear propulsion for large warships is nothing new. It is expensive and demands a high level of infrastructure, but is by now a tried and tested technology. The United States built the nuclear-powered carrier, the USS Enterprise, in 1960. This was only six years after the US Navy's first nuclear attack submarine. Now, you might argue that China's nuclear technology is still behind the US, but it would be absurd to say that China in 2022 is still 60 years behind the US in that industry. China has built its first nuclear attack submarine back in 1974 and has built multiple classes of nuclear submarines of increasing displacement and capability. To give you a more concrete example, China is building a land-based small modular nuclear reactor called the APC-100, also known as the Linglong-1. It fits the requirements of compactness for a modern naval reactor. The APC-100 nuclear reactor is expected to be operational by 2026. There is no reason why China wouldn't be developing a naval version of a modular reactor at the same time. Multiple reactors can be fitted inside a big aircraft carrier. Aside from the nuclear reactors, other necessary technologies have been developed in the process of building the Type 003 carrier. For example, the project for the electromagnetic catapult technology has reportedly gone very well. Testing done on land was reportedly very successful, including thousands of launches and recoveries of aircraft. But the Chinese electromagnetic catapult has not been tested under operational environments at sea, and I'll get into that later. 
Secondly, the development of new carrier-based aircraft is showing steady progress, including the 5th generation J-35 carrier fighter and the KJ-600 airborne early warning system. The final consideration in the case for a nuclear-powered 4th aircraft carrier is the overall strategic situation facing China in the next 10 years. A nuclear aircraft carrier will take longer to build than a conventional super carrier. The design will probably take a while to finish, and the construction process might take around 4 years, and possibly longer if this is your first nuclear aircraft carrier. Then you will need 2 years of sea trials, and even after commissioning, the ship might not reach full combat potential anytime soon. Basically, a nuclear carrier will take far longer. So, for the Chinese leadership to approve the construction of a nuclear carrier, they have to perceive the level of international tension as acceptable, and the external environment as stable. The argument that the fourth aircraft carrier will be nuclear powered generally goes hand in hand with a more stable geostrategic environment in the near future. So we have covered the main arguments and the evidence that China's fourth aircraft carrier will be nuclear powered, and they seem quite reasonable. But let's take a look at the other side of the debate, which asserts that China will build another conventional carrier before building a nuclear one. By the way, if you enjoyed our video so far, please press the like button. So what indications are there that China will or should build another conventional supercarrier? Perhaps one more of the Type 003 design. The supporters of a fourth conventional carrier generally accept that nuclear propulsion is not a new technology, and that China has the option of developing it. Rather, it is the other technologies that goes along with a supercarrier that are not sufficiently proven to justify the great expense of building a nuclear ship to use them. For example, while the electromagnetic catapult has been successfully tested on land, that is no guarantee that it will perform as expected in an operational setting at sea where it will need to withstand the wind, the rain, and constant motion. The same can be said about the Type 003 carrier's command and control systems and onboard electronics. It is better to build another cheaper conventional carrier as insurance policy. The operation of the Type 003 carrier will reveal any shortcoming in onboard systems which can be fixed before they are installed on a future nuclear carrier. Secondly, the jump from the first conventional supercarrier to a nuclear one is too big to be made in a single ship class. It goes against the PLA Navy's naval design philosophy of incremental improvement. In other words, evolutionary but not revolutionary. You can see this philosophy in action in the evolution of Chinese destroyer designs. The stealthy hull of the Type 052B was combined with domestic ASA radar and air defense missiles to produce the Type 052C. This was then enhanced with improved vertical launch cells and anti-ship missiles to make the Type 052D. The end point in this evolution is the Type 055 large destroyer, with much greater firepower and radar capability than its predecessors. The point here is that Chinese naval design tends to be cautious and focused on incremental improvement. Jumping from the first Type 003 carrier to a nuclear-powered carrier would essentially break with this long-held philosophy. 
supporters of a fourth conventional carrier generally believe that the geostrategic environment will become more unstable with a high degree of international tension. In this case, the Chinese leadership would need to accelerate the build-up of naval forces to safeguard national interests in the middle of increasing external uncertainty. Building another supercarrier of the Type 003 design would be simple and could be done quickly. A second Type 003 carrier can be commissioned and become combat capable a lot faster than a nuclear carrier. This means that the ship can bolster the strength of the Chinese Navy in time to deter potential adversaries in an environment of heightened international tension. A closely related point is that a conventional carrier would be cheaper, so the budgetary savings can be used to purchase other naval assets that would be more useful immediately, for example submarines and destroyers. A nuclear aircraft carrier, while great for power projection, probably isn't the most useful in a regional military conflict. To summarize, the believers in a nuclear-powered fourth aircraft carrier points to unofficial information from credible Chinese insiders or other sources. They point out that China has already demonstrated the technical proficiency to develop nuclear-powered warships. Apart from the nuclear reactor, the necessary technology for a nuclear supercarrier has already been developed. Lastly, proponents of a nuclear carrier believe that the strategic environment will be stable, so the Chinese Navy has the time to construct a nuclear carrier and turn it into a combat-ready warship. The supporters of a conventional fourth carrier say that China's supercarrier technology still has not been tested in operational setting, so it is too risky to build an expensive nuclear carrier to use them. Moreover, the massive leap from the conventional Type 003 carrier into a nuclear carrier is a break from the traditional Chinese naval design philosophy which emphasizes caution and incremental improvement. Lastly, proponents of a conventional fourth carrier foresee a more volatile international environment, and in this context, it is important to have a warship that will be ready for service sooner rather than later. So what do you think? Do you believe that China's fourth aircraft carrier will be nuclear powered? Or do you think that China will build another conventional carrier? Please write down your thoughts in the comments section. If you want to learn more about the benefits of using electromagnetic catapults for China's upcoming Type 003 aircraft carrier, I got a video here just for you.